Hey everyone, welcome back to the Camino Cafe. I am so happy that you are here with us. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, you're in for a real treat because I'm sitting here with my friend Nancy Reynolds. And I got to meet Nancy last year as I was walking in St. Jean, which I'm sure we'll talk about that. But uh, we've been, although we're both in our uh, respective places here in Santiago, so we could do this on Zoom. Uh, we've actually been spending some time together here in Santiago. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you for doing the show today. Thank you. What a delight to be with you. Oh, thank you. I feel like um, I, you and I keep seeing each other all over the place. And I just mentioned the first place that we met was in St. Jean and you were so kind. I, I met you then you were the Camino guide and mm. um, we just happened to have a common friend and uh, who has so kindly set us up and you toured me all around St. Jean up to Orson before I even began that walk. So uh, a big thank you for that because that was such a treat. That was so fun. And, you know, the joy for me, Lee, is to share what I love with you, with others, right? Yeah. And so to be able to tootle around and go, look, look at this, look at that. And oh my gosh, it was such a delight for me. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. You, you showed me the place where I could get crepes, uh, the little <laughs> desserts. And um, I think the thing that has always stuck with me is your um, just bright outlook on life. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have to talk about the uh, puffy clouds and <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so all that really stuck with me when I began that walk mm -hmm. so thank you for all of that and um you know the reason that I invited you on today is that you started a podcast and I love the clever idea so I want to talk about that I want to talk about your mm -hmm. own caminos and lord knows where we're going to end up but <laughs> right <laughs> but maybe because I have a little bit of advantage since you know you and I have been talking we've had this ongoing conversation for over a year now um I guess let's just catch up viewers and listeners on you know, where, where's your normal base? How did this all get started? How did you become a Camino girl, a Camino mm -hmm. guide, a Camino girl and a Camino guide? Well, my Camino story started in 2005 when I walked the Camino for the first time from Pamplona to Santiago. And it, I, it, what do you say? It was, it was a game changer. Yeah. And I wasn't able to walk every step like I'd expected. I had some knee problems. And so two years later, I went back and walked every step. Mm -hmm. And at that time I said, done, I'm done. I did it. I'm never going back. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then I've been back twice a year, every year since then. And I discovered in 2012 that I'd gotten really good at getting started on the Camino, just I'd done it so many times. I'm like, I think, I think I'm good at this. Maybe I could share this with other people and help them get started on their own Camino journeys. And so in 2013, I started leading groups from St. Jean with the sole purpose of helping them get started on their own independent journey. So mm. we just did the prep, met in St. Jean together till Pamplona, and then kissed them on the cheek and sent them on their way. Wow. And I got to witness you actually doing that because we now have a common friend that was actually doing that with you, um, who yeah. I met, gosh, I met her in Roncevallas, I guess. Yes. Tiffany, and, right? Yes, Tiffany. Yeah. And um, I got to see that in action, watching her be, you know, as we all are, a little nervous and anxious before we begin those steps. And then right. seeing her blossom and go on mm -hmm. her own after you spent a couple of days with her kind of showing the yeah. ropes. And yeah. right there, I was like, this is clever. I don't know any mm -hmm. other Camino guides that are quite doing it like this. And mm -hmm. uh, I really admire what you've started there. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about you. So you, you do this first walk from Pamplona. And um, as, as many of us do, we get some little injuries, things don't go the way we expect. Then you come back two years later and you're like, never again. <laughs> Yet you've been doing this for 17 years. So, <laughs> What is it about the Camino that pulled you back? You know, it's been a number of things. So I think it needs some context. I had left a big girl job in the corporate world I had gotten divorced and, you know, it wasn't a crazy divorce. It was just, this isn't, this isn't where I want to be. This isn't where he wanted to be. And so we, we split and I had been traveling untethered, just mm -hmm. untethered. And 
so I found, I got to the Camino and discovered that this was a place that I could be easily, affordably doing something I love to do, speaking, you know, parts of a language I sort of know. And I started to get to know a part of me that I really liked that I didn't Mm. know before. And I, the way I would describe it is being on the Camino brought out my best self, the best version of me. And I was just kind of intoxicated with that to just see a me that I liked because that Mm. hasn't always been the case, I guess you could say. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, you know, I was sharing this story with a pilgrim on my walk. I just finished walking from Saria to Santiago and that was probably around 2012, 2011, when I really understood that about myself, that I, I kept coming back because I like the version of me that shows up here. And then I realized that I became able to have that version everywhere. Mm. So no matter where I was, when I was in the US or when I was traveling other places, I noticed that I started to like myself more all the time. Mm. And, and it's something, you know, it, I just started to be the person that I was and the person I, that was always there. And I, I like that person. And I think, um, I think struggling, we talk about self-love and struggling with self-love, but there's also self-like, you know, I think, I think, I think I love myself. I do. I get, I get it. But to like myself and enjoy who I'm being and enjoy being around people that started to come out everywhere. And I could see the source of it as the Camino. And so I just keep coming back because I love it. Mm, That's so powerful, Nancy. Uh, One of my meditation teachers, uh, Sharon Salzberg, often talks about that, um, about, you know, the road to self-love is a a long road sometimes. Just learning to like ourselves Mm -hmm. is huge. What a gift Mm -hmm. you got to begin to like you. Yeah. How did that I Go ahead. Oh, and then I think what then starts to happen is, as I liked myself more, I was able to give more and I was able to be with people more and to look more at, at myself as someone who has something to give Mm. rather than someone who is just trying to figure it all out and is taking what's coming my way. Then I could start to, to reach out and to look out and to give to other people. And I, I think, you know, and I'm just kind of getting this as I'm saying it is, is yeah, to be able to give the gifts, you know, we always talk about, I'm going to give back to the pilgrim community. And that wasn't, that wasn't in my language back Mm. then. And I didn't grow up, you know, I know a lot of, I volunteer a lot now, but I didn't volunteer. I didn't give of my time and myself before. And there's been this transition where I realize I do have something to give. And it's not about exchanging something for money and the job that I do. It's that I actually can bring something straight from the heart to people to uplift, empower, encourage. And it just, it's a, it's an easy gift to give now. Mm. What a transformation that must've felt like. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's pretty amazing. You know, because I'm aware of some of the jobs that you did back after you went back home and, and they have mm-hmm. been ones of service, I, mm-hmm. I would say, right? Some of the things that you've done mm-hmm. back in the U.S. Yes, I worked at two hostels in the U.S. And it's great when you, you people who've walked the Camino have this picture of an albergue, right? And yeah. an albergue is someplace where pilgrims are, they come, they stay, they leave. They come, they stay, they leave. They come and, you know, it's a new batch every night. Well, right. at hostels in the U.S., you're more likely to get people who stay two or three or four nights. And then you get to know them and you get to, I had regular guests that would come two, three, four times a year to the hostels where I worked. And it's just, as on the Camino, it's a place of community. It's a place where people come and gather and cook meals together and sit at the table and eat together. And, Hey, we're going on this hike. You want to go that kind of stuff. So 
Yeah. And, and it all was more heart opening and it was more engaging. And the more that I came and walked the Camino, the more open I was in my life back in the U S the more, yeah, the more that all came out. Mm. I find that so interesting because the first time that you told me that you were doing that back in the U S I often forget that those opportunities are right there. You know, I think we, we pilgrims, we walk the Camino and they're like, I want to own an albergue. And then, you know, we want to move to Spain and do that when there are opportunities within the U S to mm -hmm. serve, like you served at an albergue or a hostel. So um, if somebody is listening and they maybe can't travel here right now, and they wanted to do that, um, how would they go about finding out those kind of volunteer opportunities? How did you land in that kind of situation? Yeah. So the first thing to say is that the hostels that I worked at were not volunteer. They were actually paid jobs. And okay. so I was very well envied because they provided housing they nice. provided a wage and they provided benefits. So, you know, that's gold in the United States is to have health benefits. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> right. So the pandemic changed everything in the world of hostels in the U S. So the hostel I was working at closed on March 21st, 2020, and wasn't able to open, un open again for eight months and then had to be intact groups only. It couldn't be solo travelers coming to okay. stay. So the organization is hosteling international and okay. I don't know what the landscape looks like anymore. I'm not sure that they're hiring. Right. Okay. I, you know, they were, de I mean, nearly decimated the volunteer opportunities or other opportunities that perhaps uh, maybe have, they're, they're not high wage jobs, but they're experiential jobs. Okay. And I recently interviewed a woman from, I think she's from Michigan. Her name is Kathy, who in her fifties or sixties decided to go work at Yellowstone. And wow. yeah, she'd been telling her son, don't have any regrets, go do what you want to do. I wish I'd always, I always wish I'd done this. And <laughs> Her husband said, well, why don't you go do it? So she did. She went and she worked at Yellowstone for three or four or however many months and had that experience. So, you know, the internet knows everything. You just get on yeah. the internet and ask it what, ask for what you're looking for. And it's all there. Good point. Well, that's fascinating that she went to Yellowstone. Yeah. I know. Story. I know. Yeah. All right. So how many people now, I know you, you've done, you've had a lot of people go with you um, on your tours. How many people would you say you've taken? Mm, well, I've led 13 groups okay. and those groups had anywhere from two to nine people. And yeah. And we would, uh, we would meet in St. John, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, be together till Pamplona. And so 13, you know, people ask, how many times have you done it? Well, I don't know what it is. Is right. it walking the Camino or is it <laughs> leading groups? The only thing I've counted, because I stopped counting my own personal walks right. probably 10 years ago, but I've counted how many times I've gone over the Pyrenees from St. Jean de Ronches Valles because <laughs> that's a big mountain. <laughs> that is a big mountain. <laughs> it is. So I've gone over 15 times, twice on my own walks and 13 with groups. And I've gone the low road through Val Carlos twice. Yes. I remember when you were driving me over it and I'm like, this is going to be a big walk. <laughs> this <laughs> this is a big small mountain, mountain, right? Yeah. And, and I then, just did it. I just did it a, about a month ago. I walked from St. Jean de Orson. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, because I wanted to get refreshed and reacquainted and, you know, go say hi to Jean-Jacques who uh, he and Car Carole, his wife own Orson. Right. And Oh my gosh, that's so steep. It's so hard. Yeah. So I just steep. don't, I was, it was a lovely reminder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even about Carlos, that's not a walk in the mm -hmm. park over there. I mean, it's, some people think, oh, that's not. the easy route. No, 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 mm -mm. no, mm -mm. not the easy that's, route. In some ways that route's harder because you have the hill at the end at, at, and, you know, it's lovely rolling, woo, beautiful, very nice. And then after Val Carlos, you're on the road with cars and trucks whizzing by for about mm -hmm. six kilometers. And then it's all uphill from there. So it's, yeah, the, it's at the not, very end, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I do feel that, uh, I do feel a responsibility to say to everyone, if, if they're saying don't go up through Orison because <laughs> of weather, please obey that. Don't let what we're yeah, saying yeah. about Val Carlos um, dissuade you always go with the safety of what you're being told by the authorities. Absolutely. Weather and the Val Carlos route is beautiful. I love valleys. I love valleys. 
you know, vistas. Everybody wants the vista, the big mountain and uh -huh. the view from up top. But the valley is so rich and lush and beautiful. Yeah. And, and also that, you know, don't be disappointed if you have to go that route, because sometimes uh, if it's not a clear day, you don't have the vista. <laughs> There's no vista. There yeah. is no vista. Yeah, yeah. You're like I mean, swimming yeah. through the clouds. <laughs> exactly. Still, still a romantic walk, but uh, maybe Absolutely. not a vista, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, you know, Nancy, you've had your own Caminos and then you've had the ones that you've guided folks. What were some of the learnings that you learned that you think you would have only learned through walking with others and, and kind of guiding them those first mm. few days? Mm. I've learned so much from my pilgrims and it's little things, little fine tuning, hacking things all the way up to how to be with people and just bear witness to their mm. journey. Just be people don't want your advice. They don't want you to tell them how to do everything. They just, we, we all just need to know that someone is bearing witness to what we're going through. And whether that's listening or being that presence off to the side and just going, go, you got this. It, it's the, to learn the role that we can play for each other has been just remarkable. Mm, that was such an unexpected answer, but I love <laughs> it. The bearing witness, because mm -hmm. here you are, I'm imagining um, most of the people that sign up to go with you that they have, they're nervous, like we all mm -hmm. are <laughs> to take yeah. this big journey on. Yeah. But I didn't expect you to say that the most powerful thing that you're doing is really bearing witness. I, I was expecting you to say something like, oh, you know, I tell them this and this and this, that they got to go do mm. this, but. And I do. So there's right, another but, side of it. <laughs> yeah. But the bigger the, side is the bearing witness the, with the pilgrims on the trail. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and of course they have questions, but it's really, it's so cute. So up until we get to St. John and probably when we're in St. John and up to Orson, they're wrapped. I mean, everything I say, it's like, what, what, what'd you say? What, what <laughs> after that, they're like, I got this, you know, I mean, they're, they go, it's, it's so cute. They'll, they just, uh, they, uh, they find their own voices and their own questions, right? Rather than being the recipient of a bunch of information, mm -hmm. then, then, you know, there are questions you can't even imagine having until you get to the trail. Mm. Right. I mean, how do I pack? Well, we're going to cover that before you go. And how do I, how do I communicate with my family back home while I'm there? Well, we'll cover that before you go. But then there's this, this, all these questions that when you get there, you would not even have thought to ask. Yes. And I'm not going to tell you what they are, <laughs> but here's the other thing. This is the other thing I didn't expect. I didn't anticipate, <laughs> you know, bearing witness is what happens on the trail with my yeah. pilgrims. But the greatest benefit that I think my program offers is the peace of mind to know you're not starting alone, blind over the mountain and for the families, mm. the families to know, oh, thank goodness. My sister, my daughter, my cousin, my friend isn't going to go get lost on the mountain, metaphorically, mm -hmm. figuratively, literally. So the families back home, you know, I had a pilgrim, she was in her sixties. And her mother was terrified that she was going to go do this. And she's like, no, don't worry. I'm going with Nancy. It, it'll be okay. I'm going with Nancy. So I didn't anticipate that that would be a benefit for the families as well. Yeah, I wouldn't have either. But what, what a mm -hmm. gift, right? To kind of calm down the family back home yeah. and to know that this person yeah. is not just going, you know, all alone. Yeah, because I, I had a lot of women who had either never traveled internationally or who had never traveled alone. And so to be able to tell their husbands or partners or whomever, it's okay. I've got, I found Nancy on online and this is all going to be great. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we ought to explain to people how that works. So if, if you were going to say, guide me, where would we meet? And you know, how does that play out? Do we talk a little bit? I'm imagining before mm -hmm. the trip. Yeah. So what happens is I've got a website and people find me by doing internet searches or more likely uh, from my podcast for first okay. time pilgrims. If they, because I always put the link in the notes for the show so people can find me. And, and my website has a ton of information about how it works to walk the Camino, plus the information on the podcast and the groups that I lead. 
So people get to my website somehow and contact me and we talk on, um, we email. So this was great before the pandemic, it was all email, but now we've got zoom. So if you're interested, we just get on a zoom call and talk and let's find out what you're looking to do. Let's find out if I can, I can support you in that. And then once people sign up, what I do is, um, twice a month. It it depends on when you sign up. So the final three months before we go, we'll do weekly zoom calls and we'll be on answering questions, talking, getting ready. I also send a bunch of written materials and audio, special audio recordings for my pilgrims that aren't, that are separate from the podcast. Okay. So people have all the information that they need to get ready. And then they ask questions on the podcast and then we meet in St. Jean. And so if you come by train or bus, wherever I'll meet your train or bus and I'll be there going, Hey, you know, and it's really <laughs> sweet because everybody has already met somebody on the train there. So they're like, Hey, hey this is so-and-so, and this is Nancy. And this is, you know, so we all meet. And then we do, we do a tour of St. Jean. We go to the pilgrim's office, which I think is just the most quintessential starting experience you can do. We yeah. walk around the town. We go up to the Citadel for sunset. We practice with our trekking poles in case you don't know how to use those. And then we walk. Nice. And then you typically then kind of send them on their way at what point? Mm. So we're together until Pamplona. Okay. Yeah. So we're over the mountain together. We're, you know, along the way. And there's little things I do each day to help people find their freedom and to find their comfort zone. And I won't give those away. Yeah. Understand. We need to keep something so that they can learn (laughs) them for the first time during their walk. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, um, you were here a couple of months ago and I knew somebody's, you had some ideas brewing and then you got back home and you're like, I'm going to do a podcast. So let's talk about how did this podcast idea evolve? Cause I think it's very clever, very unique. No one else is mm-hmm. kind of doing uh, the way that you're doing it. So let's share with everyone you. and talk about the name of it and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called the you on the Camino de Santiago podcast. And it is specifically for people who are getting ready for their first Camino. And I do two types of episodes. One type is just informational because I can't tell you how many people have said, when are you writing the book? When are you writing that book? We want to know everything you (laughs) know. Yeah, when are you? When are you, Nancy? (laughs) Yeah. Well, so here's how the podcast came to be. I started writing the book on getting started. And, And what I realized is, all of the books that are out there, they tell you, you know, a lot of stuff about how to get started, but they don't give you the thought process from the moment you say yes. Well, now what? And so Mm. what I, what my intention was to lay out a roadmap. So once you say, yes, I want to do this, what's your next step? Then what do you do after that? And what things do you need to think about to come to the point of here I am starting my Camino. And so that was what the book was going to be. And then I got this idea to let people hear the voices of first time pilgrims Mm. because there's so many podcasts out there and they're wonderful podcasts with people telling their stories of having walked. Yes. And I think that creates um, a little bit of romance about what the Camino is. Yes. So I wanted to hear from people who don't know what it is yet. Oh, heck, I don't even know what it is yet after 17 years, but (laughs) who don't know, who don't know what it is, where are their hearts and heads and what Mm. are, what's on their mind? Because I think that's what first time pilgrims will really relate to. So when they hear someone's story going, I'm terrified of my first three days okay, thank God. I'm not the only one. I thought I was being a weenie, you know? So people Mm -hmm. can then really start to hear what's on people's minds as they're getting ready and what questions do they have? And the fun thing in the podcast is I answer all their questions. So they get a free hour with me of give me anything, give me any question you have. And what people don't see is that we stay in contact. Sure. So the four people I interviewed for my first season have all 
just finished the Camino in the last couple of weeks. And we were in contact the whole time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so we were in contact the whole time. Um, Not, I mean, not um, some very often and some not very often, but I got to follow them. They got to ask questions. I'd get a text from, from someone, Hey, I'm about to be here where, you know, do you know any place or I can't find, or this is coming up. And it was just really fun to be able to be their resource. Mm -hmm. all the way through. And that's what I give to the pilgrims in my group. Yes, I get you started. And then I kiss you on the cheek and send you on your way. But we got technology now. So we can be in contact the whole time. And if you need anything, I'm available. Yeah. And I I love this concept that I mean, it is a freemium that you're already offering because Mm -hmm. anybody can listen to these podcasts and benefit Mm -hmm. from hearing your coaching as you're talking to the folks that are getting ready to go. Um, so that in itself is a gift to the Camino community. I and then, so. you know, if someone at that point says, yeah, you know, I, I do think I, I want to have some additional guiding, then you're there for that. So mm-hmm. really, really cool. Um, mm, so, thanks. you know, for me, I feel like my podcast has kind of been a Camino in itself mm-hmm. <laughs> from the <laughs> idea, the inception, how it grew. Um, have you seen some parallels for yourself of, your journey and getting to this point of where you are, has this been like a Camino in some ways for you? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would parallel it like that. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I would say I probably used some of the skills I learned on the Camino uh-huh. because I don't, didn't know how to do a podcast. Me uh, either. I still uh-huh. don't. <laughs> I'm still working on it. <laughs> right. So, you know, I did some online research and, yeah. um, and I had my idea and I knew what I wanted to do. And, but the technical side of it, the recording and the editing and making the sound sound good and getting a theme song and all that. Well, I had the great good fortune. I, um, my, my church in Santa Rosa is my, is my home, heart's home, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And I had just finished serving on the board of trustees at my church before I came on my Camino in the spring. And so I know the, the staff really well, and they know me and I've done a ton of volunteering and I needed a place to work and to record because you do need, you know, a nice quiet place and comfortable and all that. And so I approached them and I said, I need, I need some space. And I, I know that not all the rooms are being used after the pandemic and it's a big building. And could I, you know, maybe come a couple of days a week to record this podcast? And they said, yes. And so it grew to where I was going in four and five days a week instead of two days a week. And I was working there and I was writing my scripts there and I was interviewing my pilgrims there. And I was feeling like oh, I'm really taking advantage of this generosity. Oh my goodness. And it turns out they loved having me there because I was coming in on days when it was closed. So it looked occupied and it looked like oh. someone was there and it looked alive and it looked like there's stuff going on. And to have that gift of space to work in and then then to also have it be a win for them. And then it got even better because I know the guys who do sound on yeah. Sunday mornings. Yeah. And one of them helped me with audacity, which is the software I used to record and gave me some tips. And then the other one is this sound genius. His name is Paul. He's an absolute sound genius. And he happened to be there one day. I was the only one in the building and I hear noises and it's him. And I go, Hey, could you can I ask you a question? And of course, this is his wheelhouse. So he's like, yeah, yeah I'll answer those questions. <laughs> and so he came in and he's like showing me all of this and the that and the how to get the sound this. And, you know, so to be able to tap into the community around me and to be able to accept that help and to collaborate with other people, it is what we do on the Camino. Yes. Right. It is just thinking that I was like, that kind of sounds like a Camino. (laughs) It is what we do on the Camino. We give and we receive Yeah, and we give and we receive. And I love that transition that I've made to really understand 
the kindness of strangers and the kindness to strangers. So it's mm. not just about being, oh my gosh, somebody did something nice for me, but that I have as much and more to give to others. And that just makes me giddy. Mm. <laughs> yes. What, what a gift you had there and getting started and yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now you've done how many episodes up to now? There's quite a few on there. 13. 13. And you're going to finish out the season at what number? Mm, I, I'm hoping to do three more before I end the season. Uh, it's a little tricky because I'm on the road, right? I'm in Santiago. Right. I'm about to pick up a rental car and go tootle around along the Portuguese route because I've never walked that route. I'm going to go look at it and see if it's something I want to do. Yeah, you're going to uh, want to walk it. It's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, the tricky part then is I have to be sure to stop because I have some scripts to write. And I have to record. So you need a quiet place to record. So you don't have mm. all the background noise. Um, but you know, it's the Camino. So I guess I could go, Hey, welcome. And today we have background noise of Spain. So <laughs> welcome to my life. Uh, last we'll night, just, we'll just <laughs> I re deal with that. I yeah. recorded an episode and I almost had to cancel it. They were doing road work uh, right outside oh, my gosh. door and it was so loud. And there's constantly, you know, I, I apologize to everyone out there. I, 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 I try to have a quiet space in my place, but it's, I live in Spain. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's, it's not impossible. a quiet space ever. ever. So I'm debating. I did an interview last night with Kathy, who uh -huh. is the woman from Dallas, who I interviewed. She was actually the very first person I interviewed mm. and the second conversation with a pilgrim that I published. And so I, I got her post Camino interview Wonderful. and it was so incredible. So I'm debating whether to end the season with that or to start the next season with that. I'm not sure mm. yet. So we'll see. We'll mm. see. I keep, keep people waiting because yeah. I have had people say, I loved that interview with Kathy. I loved it. And and the interview, <laughs> I don't even, I don't know. I almost don't even need to be there. I, <laughs> I mean, people love the, the, you look at the statistics on on the, on your hosting company and it tells mm -hmm. you which ones are most downloaded. It's the interviews. They're not listening to me. They're listening to the interviews. No, they're, they're listening to both, but yeah. the interviews are the most popular. People right. love to hear stories. Well, yeah. I mean, I, that's why I do what I do. Right. I think we learn yeah. through stories. We learn through yeah. telling our story and we learn through hearing other stories. You know, I don't think um, all these podcasts that are out there about the Camino would be uh, as popular if we were just sitting there telling people, oh, you need to go walk. You need to walk the right. Camino, right? Right. But the minute you hear one of us tell about the stories and the adventures and, and the journey that we've been on, you know, that's what resonates, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. Well, congratulations. I love Thank seeing you. uh, your journey. And I know you and I could talk all day about <laughs> so many things, yeah. um, but I wanted to make sure that we got you on before your season ended so that um, people you. can find you and we will play 20 questions, everyone. So uh, just know if you are listening or watching this interview, know that there will be bonus content available on the YouTube channel for the Camino Cafe podcast. So you'll get to see Nancy's beautiful face and put a mm -hmm. face to the voice if you like. Uh, also, that will also be on the um, podcast platforms as well. So anywhere you listen to podcasts, you'll be able to hear the 20 questions. Uh, but pop over to YouTube if you want to uh, put a face to the voice. So thank you for coming today, Nancy. And we'll close this one out. I know that somebody's going to be inspired by the things that you've shared today. Uh, she's been walking for 17 years, folks. So there's something to <laughs> There's something to the Camino. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Definitely. If you could see her smile right now, you would see the energy With she's radiating. And um, you got to get some of that. So come and walk, folks. <laughs> Buen Camino, everyone. Thanks, Lee.